So today we're going to discuss the uh, INCHO 2003 problem 3 uh, detailed solution presented to you by Grammarly. Now this problem uh, has a lot of parts I guess like 3.1 to 3.9. Uh, we'll just directly get to it. So problem 3.1. Uh, pyro, uh, pyro metallurgy, that is uh, heating with a uh, reducing agent, is an important technique uh, which is used for the production of metals from their oxides. The following graph represents the change in delta G with temperature for a few important reactions. And you can see, okay, so this diagram you see here, uh, okay, sorry, what was the name for it? I think it was called. Uh, uh, shit, I forgot the name. I'll try to re uh, recollect it. Uh, by the time, okay, so what they're asking is if a mixture containing FeO and SiO2, that is, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, so th th these diagrams are called Ellingham diagrams. Yeah, I just recalled it. Uh, you can look it up, and I think uh, these are also present in your NCRT, and these are really important. So you don't have to memorize the, uh, the diagrams, like, not you don't have to memorize the lines. But uh, the point is to understand what the diagram wants to tell you. So, for example, I'll just uh, take a few minutes to explain it. Uh, for example, if it's like, uh, say, you are given this graph and uh, this is a line for uh, what? Uh, Fe plus o, uh, half O2, Fe. Fe plus half O2 gives FeO and this line represents uh, C plus half O2 gives CO C plus half O2 gives uh, CO so the point of this diagram is the, uh, this y-axis represents the delta G of the reaction and uh, you use that delta G uh, to and uh, this is the temperature and uh, you use the delta G to like uh, see the feasibility of the reaction so you know how delta g when negative means uh, the reaction is feasible when uh, delta g is positive the reaction is not feasible and when delta g equals zero then it's at equilibrium so that's what you do like uh, when you go in this direction the temperature is increasing so like here say 100 uh, here say 200 300 and 400 and uh, on this uh, delta G axis, you can see that uh, this is the zero line and uh, as you go down, it's decreasing. So uh, let this be zero and it's like uh, minus 100, minus 500. Uh, so what exactly uh, you have to do is you, you're asked about whether or not uh, the this reaction will be used to reduce uh, this ore, FeO. So uh, when you talk about reduction, so if you talk about reduction, what is the oxidation state of uh, Fe here? It's plus two and here it's zero. So when you follow this reaction in particular, this is a oxidizing reaction, obviously, because there's oxygen here and the oxidation state is uh, increasing. And what we want to do is reduce it. So for re uh, reducing, uh, for seeing the reduction of uh, Fe, the reaction would be the exact opposite, I guess. Uh, so something like this now this is a reduction reaction and what we want to see is whether or not uh, our uh, carbon here will reduce it so uh, to see the feasibility of these uh, like uh, what we did was uh, this is line for this reaction and we reverse it what what happens when you reverse a reaction the value of delta G becomes negative like if this this reaction at this temperature say uh, at this point around like okay, uh, okay around so like 300 Kelvin around 300 Kelvin or is it centigrade yeah it's uh, centigrade will do centigrade around 300 degrees centigrade yeah Kelvin seems to less I guess so at this uh, point the Delta G value for this particular reaction is supposed to be minus say 150 or something so when we reverse it the Delta G of this reaction becomes 150 all right, uh, and uh, this reaction at uh, 300 is uh, somewhere around uh, minus 300, I guess. And but we didn't reverse this reaction. This reaction is, uh, you know, it's portrayed as it as is. So this would be minus 300.
Now, in order to see the uh, if this uh, reaction would reduce FeO, we just directly add the two. That's all we do. So the half O2 would cancel, and it would be like C plus. Uh, sorry for my writing. Uh, C plus uh, FeO gives a uh, Fe plus CO. Now uh, we added the two, and uh, what happens when you uh, add two reaction is the delta G also linearly add. Since we already transformed the delta G for the FeO reaction the delta G for this reaction is minus 150 now you see how delta G of this resultant is negative this means the reaction is feasible this means the at this particular temperature uh, the carbon this reaction will reduce our uh, FeO over uh, and this is why Ellingham uh, diagrams are used so uh, if you want a basic this is the proper explanation of it if you want a basic thumb rule of what goes on here say this was our feo reaction and this was our c uh, the carbon reaction and this was the temperature axis and this is delta g so what happens here at the point where uh, your ore crosses over the uh, our c our carbon or whatever reaction we are is using to reduce the ore so like you see uh, at this point uh, the carbon ore is above the uh, the carbon line is above the the iron ore line. This is the carbon line. This point is above the iron line. So at this point, it won't reduce. But uh, after this point, what we want is the ore line to overlap or to so, or to sorry not overlap uh, go over our carbon line. After this point, from here to here, uh, at any temperature, the the uh, the reaction would be feasible. You can try it out if you want, uh, like at this point, if you try to see the uh, the delta G of this, uh, of this point, it would be a positive number. You can try it out on your own. Uh, I, I've given you a proper explanation of the Ellingham diagram and also a short trick to say or what, uh, what it is in a essence uh, here. Now let's get to the main problem, I guess. Uh, so they're asking uh, state which of the oxides will be reduced first uh, as temperature increases now as temperature is increasing uh, which of the following uh, uh, which of fu or uh, and sio2 these are the two we are comparing and uh, which of them will reduce first i'll just try to put this here uh, yeah uh, now you see, uh, if we use this this as our line, or even this actually, but we'll we'll just use carbon dioxide since it's uh, more favorable. Uh, so you see how FeO is the first one that overlaps the carbon line. Uh, so uh, FeO is going over the uh, carbon line uh, at around thousand degrees. Uh, thousand degree centigrade and uh, SiO2 is uh, uh, going over the carbon line uh, at a really high temperature around 25 degree I guess so uh, you know it's easier we would reach thousand degrees first so FeO would be the answer for the first problem it would be reduced first as temperature uh, as temperature rises state the minimum temperature at which uh, reduction of FeO and SiO2 will start so oh okay sorry i didn't mean to do that uh so here we can see that uh okay so they've used the uh, carbon monoxide okay so yeah uh what we do here as i told you at the point the point of intersection of those lines is the uh is you know it's the first point where the reduction starts so if you see for feo uh sorry for FeO, it's around, uh, uh, I guess it's almost 750, as they have mentioned, yeah. Uh, it's For FeO, it's almost 750. You can see that it's uh, intersecting the both the carbon lines, actually, uh, at around 750. While for uh, our uh, SiO2, it would be reduced, uh, the SiO2 would be reduced first here. And you can also reduce it here, I guess. You can also consider this. But uh, it's easier to reduce it here at around 150, uh, sorry, uh, 1500 degrees centigrade. So for uh, FeO, 
it would be 75 uh, 750 degrees centigrade and for SiO2 it's around 1500 degrees centigrade uh, the, the last question is uh, last part of this uh, of this sub part is uh, give the balanced chemical equation for these reduction process at these temperatures so I think you can do this very easily uh, I've even showed you how to do it over here Wait, where did it go yeah over here so this would be the uh, reduced reaction for uh, for carbon uh, sorry for the iron ore and I showed you how to do it and uh, for uh, the silicon ore uh, it's SiO2 plus 2C you should use the same method I would advise you to do this whole thing on your own and the reaction that we do, you would get is uh, SiO2 plus uh, 2C gives uh, silicon plus uh, 2 carbon monoxide so you can you can try this on your own you can try to derive it I've given you the method okay so uh, here you can see two uh, here it's 2C because uh, of some multiplying factor uh, and I think this is pretty simple so you can try this going to the next part uh, so you can see the answers here uh, in the next part 3.2 uh, in economical terms, iron ore reduction is the most important application of carbon py uh, pyrometallurgy. In the blast furnace, the mixture of hematite, coke and limestone is heated with a blast of hot air. A schematic diagram of the blast furnace is shown in the figure below. Uh, so they've sh uh, shown you the whole... Okay, so this machine is really... It's really cool. You should uh, try googling about uh, like metallurgy industry and uh, all these processes. Uh, and th this machine is actually as tall as buildings and it's a really cool thing like you should really check it out uh, what they have asked is the temperature in zone 3 rises from 900 to 2000 degrees centigrade due to an exothermic reaction occurring in the zone write down this uh, write down its uh, balanced chemical equation so this is a okay uh, so if you know the reaction then I guess you can answer it otherwise it's a uh, you know, the, uh, this is organic chemistry and this is like metallurgy. I don't want to give the impression that organic is uh, just about rot learning. But uh, this question here is basically factual data and you can't really do anything about it. So the reaction is pretty simple actually. It's just C plus O2 gives CO2. Like <laughs> that's the answer. And... Uh, uh, the thing about uh, inorganic is like uh, a lot of people complain that you know it's all uh, it's all uh, rod based and uh, it, you don't it doesn't have any logic that's not the case at all uh, but uh, a lot of stuff in an organic is like a factual data it's like this is industry data this is what happens and sometimes uh, when you try to make a logic for every possible thing then you can't keep track of logics and uh, you will eventually get them all wrong like for example in periodic table you ask whether uh, why doesn't the trend always follow it's because there are so many factors that come into play that uh, even though we have a logic for them but uh, if we decide to tell you each and every logic especially at a high school level then you would just get confused and just you know it's not easy to keep track of so inorganic does have logic it obviously it always has logic uh, even your uh, uh, inorganic reactions like the multi like, I don't know, like 50, 60 reactions you have in P block, all of them have a proper, very reasonable mechanism if you try to look for it. Uh, a lot of books do mention it, like uh, I think JD Lee, the concise JD Lee J edition, uh, shows most of the mechanisms and you can always uh, learn those mechanisms. But you know, uh, there's a reason why they don't uh, teach you that at a high school level. So we'll go to 3.3 uh, in zone 2, uh, zone of heat absorption, another reaction produces uh, produces the reagent responsible for the reduction of iron oxide. State the balanced chemical uh, equation that produces this uh, reducing agent. So I guess uh, <laughs> this is like this uh, previous question and uh, you need to know the basics, uh, not the basics but the actual what happens in the industry and what's happening in the blast furnace uh, this is also factual data I'll just show you the answer it's uh, CO2 plus C 
gives two CO. Uh, it releases car uh, carbon monoxide as light is as well just for the heck of it. Since uh, you know, I can't really explain to you why this happens. Uh, there's no like. This is you know you just have to deal with it I guess. So uh, going to three point four. Uh, in zone one you should uh, yeah sorry uh, another thing like you should see inorganic in high school especially this chapter and uh, some other chapters which uh, feel like broad based to you as a general knowledge thing. So you know what, what happened in, uh, when you studied GK you you didn't ask for logics most of the times you know. It's just something they're just giving you general knowledge. This is just general knowledge, like this reaction happening in zone two. Okay, so because of the heat, this reaction takes place. This is a general thing you should know. It's like chemistry is general knowledge, and this is more related to like metallurgy uh, and uh, all that. If you're interested in it, so uh, three point four in zone one the reducing agent reduces the oxides of iron write down balance chemical equations for reduction of iron oxides yeah so i think uh, like most of you know this probably uh, and uh, you can also like try to like if you know a basic of what uh, iron oxides are it's, i think you can get a pretty a pretty de decent idea of uh, how it would be you know reduced so say you have uh, the, the first reaction would be Fe2O3 plus CO like even I didn't know I had to like uh, study it I had to learn it I had to write it down that's why I do right now so Fe2O3 plus CO uh, gives Fe3O4 plus CO2 uh, then this Fe3O4 reacts with uh, CO uh, sorry wait that looks wrong uh, this Fe3 3O4 further reacts with CO and uh, gives FeO plus CO2. Now this FeO is then further react, uh, reacted with uh, carbon monoxide to give the iron plus carbon dioxide. So you see how this ore gets, uh, so what is this like minus 6 plus 3, yeah plus 3 to 0. How this is reduced you know uh, you don't really talk about fe3 like i guess you if you want to you can but you don't really talk about fe3o4's uh, oxygen state because it would sound really weird like minus 8 upon 3 uh sorry uh plus 8 upon 3 sounds really weird and it is sort of reduced you know plus 3 to plus 8.3 this is what 2.0 six seven something so this is technically a reduction process but you never say that uh, iron is uh, in a eight by three oxidant uh, oxidation state fe3o4 uh, decomposes or exists as uh, feo plus uh, fe2o3 uh, you can try to like see the you know you can match the atoms this is how it exists so when you when you're asked about the oxidation state of fe3o4 what you say is that its oxidation state is plus two comma plus three uh, this is technically this is the answer if, if they ever ask you what's the oxidation state of uh, uh, fe3o4 and i think fe3o4 is magnetite yeah right magnetite uh, its uh, oxidation state is supposed to be two and three so just a general fact for you uh, not a general fact but just uh, just some information for you uh, then uh, this O looks wrong oh no 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 that wasn't the O that was sorry uh, that was the zero oxidation state yeah so you see how it's uh, reduced and these are the reactions if you want to see uh, I'll just remove this and this so this is the answer uh, to 3.4 uh, sorry for uh, I'll try to make this like uh, the solutions look wrong it's like a bit it might be a software problem so I'll try to ma make these pro uh, proper when we give you the PDFs uh, for now you can like refer to this or you can even understand it from here I guess uh, going to the next problem 3.5 what reaction does limestone undergo in uh, blast furnace what is limestone limestone is CaCO3 uh, that's calcium carbonate and uh, what happens to limestone is that it's heated up because it's a 
blast furnace obviously it wouldn't be cooled <laughs> think about it so uh, what happens is uh, heat decomposition turns calcium carbonate to calcium oxide plus uh, carbon uh, carbon dioxide and uh, now this uh, calcium uh, calcium oxide is uh, reacted with uh, I can write it here as well yeah. uh, is reacted with SiO2 to give you slag CaSiO3 this is known as slag uh, so this is the reaction that happens uh, to CaCO3 I'm not sure if this reaction should be included since they only ask for CaCO3 but I think you should like at least we think uh, gram uh, the team Gramoli thinks that this should be included uh, so yeah as I mentioned this is the slag and this is the reaction the heat decomposition reaction that take, uh, takes place moving on to 3.6 uh, it's like uh, uh, so impurities such as silica present in uh, iron ore react with one of the products say a uh, okay uh, produced in the above reaction above reaction okay so I think they mean the previous reaction this yields a glassy material called slag okay so uh, what they want to uh, write the balance uh, for the formation of slag uh, yeah yeah nice uh, so what they want us is from the above reaction I guess they mean this uh, I'll just try to read it again impurities such as silica and iron ore react with one of the products say A produced in the above reaction okay so I think they mean CaO so what happens is uh, CaO yeah I think uh, by slag they just yeah we just double answered our <laughs> okay yeah so f for this the reaction should be like there's only one slag that forms from uh, calcium so yeah yeah sorry uh, so as you can see here uh, CaO plus SiO2 I already showed you here this is the reaction for slag what happens is uh, uh, this is this is supposed to be one of the products uh, which they are mentioning which reacts with SiO2 to give slag and uh, this is the reaction they asked for state and explain whether like silica iron oxides will also react with a so no uh, the thing is uh, cao is basic in nature cao is basic and uh, our uh, silicon dioxide is acidic but the iron ores which they are talking about Fe2O3 uh, are amphoteric which don't react with uh, uh, which don't react with SiO2 here so there would there won't be any slag formation with the uh, iron ores uh, doesn't form slag it's amphoteric in nature note that FeO is also amphoteric so yeah as I said Fe3O4 consists of Fe2O3 and FeO none of them react uh, because of the amph uh, amphoteric nature of it moving on to 3.7 uh, in the absence of limestone the yield of iron metal is adversely affected due to a particular chemical reaction identify this reaction and give its equation so I might have misstated something in the previous answer what happens is uh, uh, there's this reaction of iron uh, FeO plus SiO2 gives uh, uh, sorry Fe SiO3 and this is slag. Uh, I said that FeO is also it is amphoteric uh, and uh, I said that it doesn't react with I'm sorry I, I stated that Fe2, Fe2O3 doesn't react with SiO2 because of the amphoteric nature but FeO apparently does. Uh, I'll try to give you a proper explanation for it uh, I'm not sure like uh, this is a factual this is factual data I guess I like I'll try to look for some uh, proper explanation although I couldn't find any but uh, I'll try to look for a particular explanation like uh, as I said a lot of this uh, is already under research and uh, what happens is a lot of these reactions are factual data it's, it's based on uh, most of inorganic reactions are based on like uh, uh, like data I guess you know so finding the proper explanation and logic is difficult like uh, a lot of reactions are already under research and it's like difficult so uh, what happens is uh, 
this reaction take place and uh, that's why the yield is reduced now uh, moving to 3.8 moving to 3.8 uh yes lag yeah so moving to 3.8 state the function state the function of the specially designed cup and cone arrangement shown at the top of the blast furnace okay so i'll need to go to the blast furnace for that okay so this uh, i'll try to zoom in on it so the okay so this is uh, a really a logical thing what this uh, cup and cone like arrangement is basically so that the gases don't ex uh, escape the blast furnace uh, especially since a lot of these gases are like CO and all that uh, and uh, the only reason this arrangement is kept here is because the gases uh, shouldn't escape uh, and go into the surrounding I guess uh, so where was it 3.8 right uh, yeah it doesn't allow it does not allow the gases to escape then 3.9 okay this looks like a big one so 3.9 an aqueous solution of FeCl3 pale yellow in color was taken in three test tubes uh, the reagents added to each test tubes were given in the table this or right your observation and corresponding valence chemical reaction uh, chemical equations so uh, for this it's like uh, FeCl3 first added to NaOH uh, first added to NaOH then the valence chemical uh, okay so the observation what happens when if you, I'll try to write it here oh sorry 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 uh, I'll try to write it here uh, so the reaction that happens is FeCl3 uh, plus NaOH gives uh, Fe uh, it's, it gives a, pres a precipitate of uh, FeOH whole choice and uh, yeah so it gives a, a dark green or a brown I guess dark green PPT yeah, it's a greenish brown PPT that gets formed uh, this is the first reaction and uh, the greenish brown PPT would be the observation next was wait, uh, okay, so FeCl3 is common, right? So I can try FeCl3 plus uh, KSCN under acidic con uh, condition. So KSCN gives uh, under acidic condition gives uh, FeSCN whole thrice, and this is a red colored compound plus KCl. Uh, this is the chemical reaction for uh, the second and the, the observation is a red uh, red color compound uh, the third one is K4 FeCN6 plus uh, FeCl3 okay so this uh, this forms uh, I, I don't think they would expect you to remember this uh, but the main uh, the main part of this is uh, uh, th this this is a pretty common compound this is a pretty famous compound that's why maybe they gave you otherwise I don't think compounds like these would ever be asked uh, this one is Prussian blue you must have heard of it Prussian uh, blue uh, sorry uh, it's Prussian blue you get the point or it's also called Berlin blue uh, just a little extra information for you so the the observation the equation is this and the the, the observation would be the formation of uh, Berlin blue or Prussian blue uh, so these are the reactions that take place you can see that uh, so I we have given you the solution I think this is the last slide yeah this is the last slide so uh, I guess these were the solutions to problem 3 of uh, INCHO uh, 2003 and, uh, and I hope you guys uh, understood all the solutions.